Tropical Storm Barrel is less than 48 hours away from landfall in Texas, where we are expecting major impacts, including the potential for significant and life-threatening storm surge, flooding rainfall, high hurricane force winds, and the potential for a tornado outbreak. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Tropical Storm Barrel and why this might impact areas other than just Texas, and it could impact areas like Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Missouri, and even Kentucky. So we're going to begin with what barrel looks like right now, and you'll probably think right off the bat, where in the world did Tropical Storm Barrel even go? Well, right now in the infrared imagery, it is extremely hard to see it. This is what it looks like, and we have some big convective activity kind of on the northern side of this tropical storm, and you might be thinking, this looks like it's going towards Louisiana, right? That's not necessarily true. Actually, Tropical Storm Barrel to the naked eye is not very visible, but it's just to the south of this convection. We have a a lot of wind shear out there this morning so it looks really funny on the infrared imagery but as we go throughout the day today it is expected to organize at least some and it should look more like a normal tropical storm nonetheless this is still producing tropical storm force winds around 60 to 65 miles per hour wind gusts are up near 80 miles per hour near the center of this thing so it's actually a relatively strong tropical storm still but one thing i do want to point out is that the pressure has actually gone up over a thousand millibars overnight so this is actually been overall a weakening tropical storm but it is not probably going to stay like that for much longer now if you didn't believe me where tropical storm barrel is located just look at the low level clouds here that are kind of spinning here around this area the actual center of low pressure is going to be right here which is kind of funny because that's where a little bit of convection is located it gives you an idea of how sheared this storm is currently looking at least on the infrared imagery so really crazy presentation this is what happens when we have a lot of vertical wind shear and that's exactly what's happening here just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula very early this morning. Now, the National Hurricane Center has continued to shift the cone of uncertainty further to the east, meaning that a landfall in Texas is expected out of Hurricane Barrel, or at least expected to be Hurricane Barrel here over the next couple of days. Right now, it is a tropical storm. Sustained winds last measured near 60 miles per hour. That might be a little bit different, and it might fluctuate throughout the morning, depending on when you're watching this video. It is moving west-northwest at about 13 miles per hour. That is key because at one point this was moving at 22 miles per hour as a category 4 and category 5 hurricane so it is slowing down a lot and it's expected to slow down further as it moves towards texas over the next 48 hours now throughout the day today i do not anticipate much strengthening out of tropical storm barrel there will probably be a very gradual increase in intensification when it comes to pressure and wind speed but it's nothing going to be substantial today because it is a very high shear environment across the southwestern and southern Gulf of Mexico. Now, conditions tomorrow become more favorable for intensification, and we might see some rapid intensification if Tropical Storm Barrel takes a very easterly path here on this particular cone of uncertainty. So if it travels up the right edge of this cone of uncertainty, that is where it's going to have the best chance of rapid intensification, which means that this could go to a Category 2 or even 3 hurricane before it makes landfall in Texas or maybe even in very far western or southwestern parts of Louisiana, which by the way is very unlikely, but it's something that we can't yet rule out at least in this cone of uncertainty. With that said, it is at least expected to be a Category 1 hurricane upon landfall as we go a little bit after the morning commute on Monday, which there won't be much of a commute in these areas. I would anticipate landfall probably around 10 or 11 a.m. on Monday. If it goes further to the north though and east, closer to Houston, landfall might not be until later in the afternoon on Monday, so that is something that we're we'll going to have to watch for very closely. It is currently expected to make landfalls a category one hurricane sustained winds near 95 miles per hour but that could increase over the next few outlooks from the national hurricane center after this it will eventually move inland as a tropical depression and it will continue to bring some rainfall and perhaps even a few tornadoes across parts of the mississippi valley back over into the ohio valley but that is going to depend on exactly where tropical storm barrel which eventually would be tropical depression barrel tracks here across parts of the ohio valley and mississippi valley Hurricane watch is in effect up and down the coast from Mexico back closer to Galveston. That is expected to continue into warnings as we get closer. Now, this is some of the latest model guidance from various computer models, and this is also what we call the spaghetti chart. Basically gives you an indication of where all the computer models are indicating where a particular tropical cyclone is going to be going. So again, your initiation point is back over in the northern Yucatan Peninsula, which again has already moved offshore. It is in the open Gulf of Mexico waters. Once we go into tomorrow, 
this is expected to be again just to the east of Mexico and then by Monday this is forecasted to make landfall somewhere between Corpus Christi and Houston that is where I think the landfall will be as we go into early Monday and then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday it becomes extremely uncertain exactly how fast this will be moving there are a couple scenarios where this could be a very slow moving hurricane an eventual tropical storm as it moves inland that would dump a lot more rain across areas in Texas especially but if it's a faster moving system and gets caught by the jet stream we could see this thing race off to the northeast that could actually lead to a multi-day tornado threat from anywhere from Louisiana and Texas all the way back into Kentucky and as well as Tennessee and it might even go up into the Ohio Valley I wouldn't rule that out but aside from that at least some showers and thunderstorms will be in the forecast in those areas ensembles are pretty much on board with this not many of them are really intensifying this beyond a category 2 hurricane so the likelihood of this being a major hurricane upon landfall is relatively low but we could still see some rapid intensification and computer models have been struggling forecasting this just a little bit here's the intensity chart from all those different computer models I just showed you uh, quite crazy enough most of them do not bring this above a tropical storm but there are a couple that do bring this at least to a category 1 hurricane there are many models though that we use especially I do like the HWRF model or the European model or the GFS model that even bring this beyond a category 1 hurricane so I would not just rely on this this is only a handful of really hundreds of computer models that you can use so that's something to keep in mind I would expect that there's at least a chance that this gets to a category 2 or 3 hurricane as it moves closer to Texas very early Monday morning now when we were talking about the overall track of hurricane barrel and how fast it'll be moving once it gets to Texas this is something that we're going to have to watch for very closely early next week we're going to be watching for a dip in the jet stream which might be able to suck up hurricane barrel as it moves inland and this could eventually actually lead to this going much faster to the northeast but it's going to depend on the timing of barrel and how far south this jet stream dips if it dips far enough down to the south hurricane barrel will basically be a latched on to the jet stream and it'll move much faster but if it's not far enough to the south we could see barrel just kind of you know meander across texas louisiana and arkansas for even a couple or a few days and it might just occlude down there it might actually weaken out entirely over land so that'll be something to really watch for closely now i'm going to show you two different scenarios with barrel and what it could do over the next few days as we go into late saturday into sunday the icon model does again have this intensifying at least a little bit from about a thousand millibars of pressure down to about 989 by late tonight at least the icon model shows that by the time we go into tomorrow morning this starts to intensify a bit further just to the east of brownsville texas and then eventually by sunday night we'll eventually start to see some of those outer bands reaching areas like very far southwestern louisiana and southeastern texas with the potential for a couple or even a few tornadoes being a possibility by the time we go into early monday morning this is expected to make landfall somewhere across the texas coast icon model drives us right up into the galveston bay and eventually into houston which would be probably worst case scenario because this could intensify into a category two hurricane and by monday afternoon and evening this starts to move back over to the north and north northeast which is actually where the jet stream will eventually be at least that's what this is forecasting and if that happens this will really quickly move through texas and arkansas and then by tuesday this could actually be bringing some showers thunderstorms and maybe even a few tornadoes to areas like kentucky and tennessee now that's not a slam dunk scenario because we could see this also a bit slower which i'm going to show you a scenario there here in a second the icon model does dump a lot of rainfall across east texas especially notice many areas between three to seven inches of rainfall in a widespread area we'll have some locations though that'll pick up over 10 to 12 inches of rain especially near the coastline of wherever this makes landfall and if you're on the west side of where the eye is you might not see much rain at all maybe only a tenth of an inch up to an inch of rain it's going to depend on how close you are to the eye and where the eye of this particular hurricane does go now the gfs model is the other model i'm going to show you which in this particular case the gfs model does not have this as an intense hurricane as it approaches texas which i think that this is an outlier type model when it comes to intensity but i do think the pathing of this does still make sense it could make landfall near corpus christi as we go into late sunday night into early monday morning and eventually ride over to the north and north northeast eventually towards texas what's interesting about this model though in particular is really not that it's more about the overall track of this once it's inland because we could see this as a very slow moving tropical disturbance as it moves into texas going into late monday into tuesday and this is by tuesday afternoon it just kind of sits here in northeast texas and arkansas and then by wednesday it just kind of turns into a, a mush of rain basically across louisiana and the mississippi valley 
rally and then it's gone basically by Thursday. So that's another scenario when it comes to the long-term vision after making landfall. I do think the ICOM model though has a better grab on intensity and as well as when it comes to the overall pathing of it as well. The GFS model has an interesting path. I just don't think it's going to be what's going to happen with this. This is what the GFS model shows in terms of rainfall. So if it does stall a bit more, we could easily see a many areas picking up over six inches of rain and then some other, other isolated locations could be up to a foot, maybe even more of rain across parts of Texas. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.